Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. I'm just continuing um, my discussions on the top uh, 10 weather and climate events of a record setting year. You know, of course, uh, you know, around the world, people's lives have been disrupted this year uh, from the coronavirus. Um, and uh, there's a vaccine which hopefully starts addressing uh, the, the issue and reduces the number of infections. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a vaccine for, for climate change. so. I'll just continue um, where I left off in the previous video. So in 2020, we had the hottest reliably measured temperature. It reached 130 degrees Fahrenheit in Death Valley. Okay, uh, August 16th, 2020. Okay, um, there have been the previous, um, the hottest reliably recorded temperature in world history um, is probably this set this number here that was just set this year 129.9 degrees Fahrenheit or 54.4 degrees Celsius previous records were 129.2 at Death Valley in 2013 and also in Kuwait in 2016 so if you go on on Google Earth uh, it occurred here at Furnace Creek Visitor Center here so we'll just zoom in here Okay, zoom in on Google Earth. Uh, here's the visitor center. So they have a weather station there. You might be able to see it actually. Maybe one of these things over here. I don't know. Yeah, probably. Well, that looks like a building fan. Maybe here, right? That's. Uh, but anyway, that's where the record uh, temperature was set in the in 2020, and that's probably a record in history. And I went to uh, Earth Null School and I picked the date here, which was uh, August 16th at about 5 p.m. local time. And I got the latitude and longitude of Furnace Creek Center here, which is down at the bottom here, 36 degrees, 27 minutes north, 116 degrees, 51 minutes west. And then going to uh, Earth Null, uh, Earth Null School, moving this cursor around to as close as I could get, then you can see the temperature there. Um, I don't have the resolution here, but uh, you get the idea, and you can see the tremendous heat here, um, the heat wave that was going on at that particular time. Okay, number seven is the most expensive 2020 disaster. I bet you most people, almost, I bet you almost no people watching this video have, have heard of this. Flooding in China causes 32 billion in damage. This was an ongoing event in China, June through September. It destroyed 1.4 million homes, $32 billion in damage, according to the insurance broker Aon. Okay, that puts it as the third most expensive non-US weather disaster since accurate rec records began in 1990, adjusted for inflation. Okay, there was 1998 flooding in China, 48 billion. 2011 flooding in Thailand, 47 billion. And this was a 32 billion flooding event. So for every half a degree of warming, that increases the annual flood losses in China by more than $60 billion US. So here's the paper. Okay, this is a open source. You can just have a look at it, um, and it goes through the uh, it goes through a scientific analysis of flooding losses, historical flooding losses in China. Here's how they vary from from uh, the mid mid eighties to present. You know, a lot of fluctuation. Here's a, this was a very, an extremely bad year. It looks like 2010 when flooding in Pakistan was also record. So the, a trough would be sort of blocked and stuck over this region, causing just rain and more rain and more rain, causing uh, huge flood losses. So here we are, this year is about 31 billion here. Okay, but it still makes a top 10 uh, list. But you know, most people in the West would not have heard of this. Okay, sea ice, Arctic sea ice. That's near record low Arctic sea ice, made number eight on the list. Here is the sea ice uh, age in years um, in 1985 versus in 2020. Okay, uh, this is late August to early September and early September 2020. 
And so we're comparing the same thing here, and you can see multi-year ice, four plus year ice, three to four year ice, two to three year ice, one to two year, and on the fringes, first year ice. And here, there's mostly first year ice on this fringes. There's very, very little multi-year ice left. We have near record low Arctic sea ice, reached the minimum on September 15th. It normally happens mid-September. But second lowest extent and volume ever recorded behind 2012. And a new study, and I did a whole separate series of videos on this. This is by um, Francis. Um, that the 2012, 20, okay, basically we get a shift in the weather pattern. So, it, you know, it looks like the, the, the melting of the sea ice is huge initially, and then it kind of stalls out in, in late August, uh, you know, earlier, mid or late August, and it doesn't, we don't get a new record set. So despite record Arctic temperatures, record global temperatures, we haven't set a new record since 2012. And it looks like there's some feedback with the jet stream bringing a trough over the Arctic and, and stalling out the, uh, the melt. But, you know, we're going to lose, the Arctic's going to be ice-free soon in the summer, late summer, we're going to get it, um, this blue ocean event and then the uh, you know uh, warming will ex greatly accelerate in the Arctic and on in the on the planet, and of course uh, the best data for this uh, Arctic is Arctic sea ice graphs. Here's what you can see what's going on right now with the extent and. Uh, you know, this is the this is a warmer climate and Arctic sea ice in a veritable suicide pack. The death spiral, a vicious melting feed, warming feedback, more melting of snow and ice, more warming, and then it just speeds back and back and back. It's like a revolving uh, door, you know, a revolving door. You just keep going around and around and around. The ice is spiraling to uh, nothing. Okay, um, and it talks about the, you know, it's the volume, here's the volume, 1979, 16,855 cubic kilometers of ice. Now we're, a, we're, we're, we're a quarter, we're a quarter of that in 2020, you know, and it's rapidly heading, heading to, heading down this, this witch's brew or death spiral or, okay, so that made the top list. Number nine is the U.S. withdrawal from the Paris Climate Accord. That happened the day after the U.S. election, November 3rd, and the election of Joe Biden. You know, he, Biden's announced uh, he's rejoining the Paris Agreement on the day of his inauguration, January 20th. And they, the, the proposal uh, for the climate change plan, they say they're going to tackle climate change as a top priority, and they propose a plan to invest $2 trillion over four years in deploying climate solutions. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, cautious optimism, I guess. Um, right? Lots of people, lots of people that are you know, EPA officials and uh, environmental people, um, Department of Energy, clean energy standards, and so on. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Number 10, finally, is a near record number of global billion dollar weather disasters. So we had 44 billion dollar weather, we, we had 44 billion dollar weather disasters globally in 2020. The record was 47, set in 2010. 2020 could challenge that record when the final tallies are announced on January 25th. So th this was, um, we still have the December events. You know, it could c carry the 44 over the, the record, previous record 47. The U.S. had 25 alone. So the U.S. had over half of the global ones. The U.S. is getting hammered by climate change and it's causing huge amounts of money and sending lots of people in the U.S. into, into poverty. There's been a staggering rise in climate-related disasters um, from extreme weather events, etc. These have almost doubled in number from 3,656 in 1980 to 1999 to 6,681 from 2000 to 2019. Number of major floods more than doubled Incidents of destructive storms increased um, from increased significantly from 1457 to 2034. So here is what the report is saying. It's baffling that we willingly and knowingly 
continue to sow the seeds, uh, sow the seeds of our own destruction, despite the science and evidence that we are turning our only home into an uninhabitable hell for millions of people. This is what the UN is saying. Okay, the UN um, Office of for Disaster Risk Reduction. That's what they're saying. Of course, they called attention to industrial nations that are failing miserably on reducing greenhouse gas emissions to levels commensurate with the desired goal of keeping global warming at 1.5 degrees Celsius, as set out in the Paris Agreement. So we're blowing past 1.5. Next El Nino year, it's just going to blow, blow, take us past. And again, this 1.5... The original numbers, the Paris Agreement, the original numbers were based on a baseline of 1750, the year 1750, but that was shifted up to, to, um, to 1880 to 1910 as a baseline, and then more recently to 1950 to 1981 as a baseline. So the base, if you keep moving the baseline up, yeah, we'll never reach 1.5 or 2. That's cheating, though. So, um, yeah, so there's been tremendous uh, disruption, and this is a an article. These these this insurance company or reinsurance company, they have reports, uh, global catastrophic uh, recaps, catastrophe reports, you know, every month of the year, and there's a lot of good good stuff there if you want to get further information on these. So in summary. Um, yeah, so in summary, uh, you know, Yale has put out their uh, top 10 weather and climate events. I could, uh, you know, there might be, you know, you, you could actually, um, how do you pick only 10 weather events out of, uh, you know, hundreds? I mean, I, I was um, recently on the uh, CTV television in Canada, um, and I was supposed to be on for a five to eight minute clip talking talking about the top 10 weather and climate events in Canada. And, uh, you know, I started talking about some of the, first, you know, this is, so what, what events were the, what was the top one, I was asked. And, you know, how can you pick just one climate event? I mean, in Canada, it's probably the massive uh, hailstorm in Calgary in, in the summer. That's probably the most costly event. But how can you pick just one event? And, you know, to put them all in context, these extreme weather events, you need to talk about the Arctic warming, the jet streams changing, the ocean uh, currents changing, and the whole system uh, change, the abrupt changes in the whole system. But, uh, you know, they wanted to talk about a weather event in, in Canada. So, you know, instead of being five to eight minutes, I don't know, I also, I think I was bumped because this, that was the day the, uh, the shutdowns were announced. So that's all CTV wanted to talk about that day. So, but anyway, uh, so it was, it was a bit of a disappointing interview. It was way too short, not, not too substantial. But anyway, um, you know, I'll, I'll do lots of videos over the holidays and uh, please suggest topics and please consider donating to my, uh, to my uh, website. Okay. Happy New Year. Thank you.